today with Jane Cregan from Erin Road Erin. Jane, I just want to ask, um, why did Erin Road Erin decide to put on the special sustainability train for today's um, summit taking place in Galway? Um, well, we were delighted to, to be asked to become involved um, with this summit and uh, travelling by train is one of the most environmentally sustainable um, ways to travel. So I think it, it was fitting that the delegates here today uh, travelled down um, with on us on one of our new trains um, that has uh, amongst the lowest CO2 emissions of any train that are now operating in Europe taking more cars off the roads as well? Well this is it, I mean if you look at, we've 150 people on board here today so you can just imagine how many cars we have taken off the road um, uh, by providing this train uh, to the summit in Galway today and I think um, from walking up and down there's a great buzz and everyone seems to be relaxed and enjoying their trip on the train. We're here with Mike Hayes from KPMG, um, good morning Mike. Good morning. Um, Mike, I just want to ask you, do you think um, that we are on um, the eve of an economic shift to a global green economy? Uh, yes, I do believe that. I think there is profound changes happening throughout the world. Um, we're not just talking about energy, and everybody associates energy as clearly you know, a very important area in terms of the transition to green. But we're talking about shortages in areas like water, food, huge growth and population. So, and also a changing financial environment. What that really means is that businesses who embrace these type of changes are going to be the businesses that survive in the future. Businesses who ignore this fairly dramatic change and a change that we haven't seen certainly in the last 150 years do so at their peril. Evelyn, I just want to ask, is there, um, are you seeing a trend for um, investment funds turning towards the global green economy? Are they, are they looking towards this now? Yeah, what we are seeing um, in JP Morgan, we're seeing across the globe there is a shift in changing the type of investment strategies and styles that funds typically invest in. And the shift is towards sustainability because it's a growth area. Um, Ireland um, has a huge um, significant area of servicing investment funds so what we're seeing now is this growth in the investment funds the types and natures of the underlying investments that investment funds are shifting towards and Ireland has a match for that in its servicing here we've been here for 25 years and so we can offer the service that these funds need. Barry, I just want to ask you about the Sustainability Summit taking place today. Do you think it um, is useful for getting the message across that Ireland can become a clean tech ep epicentre? Well, it's really serving two purposes. One is getting the existing clean tech community in Ireland together, uh, which itself is a massive uh, benefit in terms of clustering and networking and so forth, but also positioning Ireland in the global space in this sector is critical, given the abundance of, of potential that, that Ireland has. In, this, in, in the clean tech sector. And the report that Ernst & Young recently brought out about the clean tech area and the jobs it can create, what are the main growth areas for job creation, do you think? The biggest one by far will be energy efficiency, so the retrofitting of, of buildings across the country uh, to reduce energy consumption, where not only will you reduce energy consumption, but you're creating jobs in the process uh, and you're making the whole entire economy a little more self-sufficient in the, in the longer run given our exposure to, to fuel imports right now. And how many jobs do you think can be created in the region? Well, our report is really, a, a lot of our report was a review of many studies that have been done by, by a variety of people and there's an estimate of anywhere between 50,000 and, and 80,000 jobs could be created between now and 2020 uh, given the right policy approach and given some external factors in terms of oil, gas prices and so forth to, uh, to, to take this off. Brian, I just want to ask you a quick question about what do you think events like these are good? How are they going to help Ireland become recognised on the global stage as being an epicentre for clean technologies in the future? Well, look, even here, imagine a train full of serious business leaders talking clean tech, talk, talking sustainability, spending the day debating it at a high level. It's a great development in terms of, of the activity level in Ireland and the interest in this topic. And yesterday at the Sustainable Energy Authority, a delegation from Washington Chamber of Commerce came to talk uh, to you. But what was that event all about? Well, it's just an example of the international linkages. Washington State are in Ireland talking about clean tech, talking about other areas where they want to cooperate. And it's amazing how similar the issues are. It's very strong interest in ocean energy, very strong interest in integrating wind into the grid. And what's great is places like that see Ireland as doing some very interesting things. So it's great to have a two-way dialogue, Washington companies selling here, Irish companies selling there. It just shows how global this movement is now.